How big is a character? A single piece of text, one symbol. If this seems like an obvious question to you, then maybe this video is for you. Let's talk about it. Welcome back everybody, it's great to be back. I finally found some time to record a video. It's good to be back in the action. I'm sorry I was out of it for a bit. And of course, I hope you're all doing well as this year wraps up. So today I wanted to talk about text, strings, characters, and something that new programmers often miss. And there's a very good reason that beginning programmers often miss this. And that's because we simply just don't teach it to you. At least not at first. And that's because you have a lot to learn. You've got a lot of different information that we're cramming into your heads. There's a lot to keep track of. And this is a detail that we can safely usually ignore and save for later. We simply just don't want to overcomplicate things for you when you've got enough to worry about. And so we start out by saying, hey, when you see strings, when you see a character, a character is one byte, eight bits, a value from zero to 255 or zero to 127. And maybe we show you an ASCII table like this and we tell you that each of these values, these numerical values correspond with a particular symbol and we go with that. And if you are a new programmer, feel free to stick with this for now. Tuck this video away for later when you're ready to take things to the next level and to add a little complexity to your life. But for the rest of you, let's jump into the code. So today I wanna to start out with a really simple program. We've got just basically a main function here. You notice that I have a buff size that's defined a 4K that I have set up. What I'm gonna do with this program is I wanna make it read in some text from standard in. I could of course hard code things, but this is gonna keep things a little more flexible and give us a little more room to play with. So anyway, I have my buffer size right here. Let's come down here and let's simply just make a character array called input and we're gonna make it buff size. So this is gonna be able to hold buff size characters. And then let's come down here and use F gets and we'll say f gets, so store the data into our input buffer. And we want to store up to buff size minus one characters, and we will get it from standard in. Now why buff size minus one is because we wanna make sure we leave room for our null terminating character. And then finally, what I wanna do, because we're trying to answer this question about how big a character is, I'm going to come down here and just, we're gonna print out a few things. Let's first print out, let's say input and print out a long unsigned. That's gonna be the number of characters in our string that we just read. And then let's print out, just to make sure nothing funny is happening, let's print out the string itself. So this will be, we'll use string length or str len and pass in input to that. And then let's just print out input. So this should print out the length of our text and the text itself. So this is a good start. This is a good place for us to start playing around. Um, I do have a make file here that I created. Very simple. If you've never seen make files, please check out my video on make files or videos on make files, I should say. But there's nothing fancy here that you haven't seen on any of my other videos. So for now, let's come down here and we will compile it. And if we run it, you can see that I can type in things like C-A-T and it's gonna say this is four characters or I should say four bytes, right? It is, it's three characters. Characters, C, A, and T, and the null terminating character. Each of those are taking up one byte, so the total is four bytes. And so from this, we could conclude that all characters are one byte in length. But what if I change things up a little bit? What if I come in here and I run it again, but this time I come up and I change my keyboard to Khmer? Now, some of you know that my second language is Khmer, but so now if I'm working in Khmer and I type two characters and two keystrokes, basically, I'm gonna type a Mo and I'm gonna type a Ga. This is the Cambodian word Mo, which means to come. And if I hit enter, well, now things are starting to look really interesting because now we have seven bytes, but I only type two characters. So that's three bytes per character and then the null character, so we get seven. So what's going on? Well, simply put, when we start programming, we typically think about something like ASCII, which is a really simple standard, easy for programmers to keep track of, where you have one byte per character, and it works okay for basic English and other languages that use the exact same alphabet as basic English, but the world is full of a lot of different languages and a lot of different symbols, far more than we could store in a single byte, which can only have values from zero to 255. So what do we use instead? Well, we use different encodings uh, that use multiple bytes for each character. And there are many different ways we could do this. Let's see with this program what's actually happening, which encoding we're actually using. In order to do that, oh, whoops, I should change back to English. So if we include a different header file, that's going to be locale.h. 
This is going to allow me to get information about how my machine is currently representing natural language and text. And then I can come down here and let's just make a character pointer. We'll call it locale and set it equal to the return value for set locale lc all and the empty string. Now this, just to explain this really quick, this is something I actually find a little bit annoying. It's not my favorite thing in the world is when there is a function called set something, in this case, set locale, but it actually can be used to get that thing as well as set that thing. I get it, people wanna make multi-purpose APIs and that's fine. I just find it a little confusing for new beginners. They come in here and they say, wait, that says set locale, but you're really getting locale. So if you see things like this, you typically want in your programs to just say, something like this, get the locale. Since for someone who hasn't seen set locale, that might not be completely obvious from this code. But then we'll come down here and let's just print at another printf and say locale is percent %s, new line character. And we're just gonna print out what the locale is for my current machine. And if we come down now, we can compile it again and let's run it again. And you'll notice a few things. So first thing it says, hey, this machine is using English, US, American English, and the text is encoded in UTF-8. Now, what is UTF-8? Well, it's the character encoding that my computer is currently using. Now, you may have heard about Unicode, and UTF-8 is defined as part of the Unicode standard, and it's super common these days. It's convenient uh, for some reasons maybe we'll go into in a future video. It can represent over a million different symbols or characters, and I'm definitely thinking that maybe we should dive into UTF-8, the details about the encoding, how to decode it and whatever in a future video. Please let me know if that's something you're interested in. There's actually a lot there. Maybe that could turn into actually a series of videos, who knows? But for now, I think this gives us an answer to our question of how big a character is, a bit of more, more nuanced answer. Like many questions in computing, the answer is it depends. It depends on the machine you're using. It depends on the character encoding you're using specifically. And then of course it depends on the character you typed. So we'll definitely look at this more in depth in future videos, but I hope you learned something new today. I hope this expands your view of text, what text is, and maybe helps you see and understand some of these strange things you see if you start to delve into text when you're dealing with characters that don't fit inside the typical ASCII standard. Like the video if it was helpful, subscribe, click something on your way out. Tell a friend so the channel can continue to grow. And until next time, I'll see you later.